Wow, how cool is that? So we've got a nice laser beam going right there. All right, it's here. This is a gadget that's going to save us a tremendous amount of time sawmilling in the future. It just arrived. Uh, I actually stumbled on it in one of the sawmilling groups on Facebook and somebody had a really great idea to take their bandsaw mill and kind of increase its productivity using a laser and a 3D printed mount. We are getting ready to start a timber stair project and that means a bunch of sawmilling. If you love sawmilling, you want to buy a sawmill or you're just interested in sawmilling, you're going to want to stick around because what's in this box is going to be a ton of fun. We have done a ton of sawmilling as part of building our timber frame debt-free dream home and I'm always looking for ways to make sawmilling easier and more fun. I know it sounds crazy, but even though you have a sawmill, it's a lot of work. And so the temptation is sometimes when you probably should sawmill is to just buy the material anyway. I happened to stumble on this little gadget in a sawmilling Facebook group recently. After having sawmilled 55 logs into a timber frame in three weeks, I'll tell you a lot of that greenhorn newness, the honeymoon of owning a sawmill goes out the door really quick. And you learn that sawmilling is a ton of work, but it can be a ton of fun. And so what I'm looking for is after everything I've done, what are some little tips and tricks that can make sawmilling a little bit easier? This gadget is a small laser that mounts to a bandsaw mill head. It might actually mount to more than a bandsaw, but that's what the original kind of marketing was on it. It has a couple of strong magnets that are designed for it to mount to the saw blade cover. And then its job is to project a laser line. It's got this little 3D printed mount for this laser projector and then a small power converter and it's designed to connect to the battery on the machine, making for quick work. And then they installed this quick disconnect here so that you can leave the power converter installed and you can uh, maybe disassemble or dismount this quickly, uh, maybe probably to protect it from weather. I'm not really sure that this is really designed to just sit out in the weather all the time, being that it's kind of a precision instrument. I probably would take it off the sawmill and just recalibrate it every time we start the sawmill. Some of the higher end sawmills have these types of gadgets on them. They're usually called a head rig or something like that. And they cast this line down the log and it helps the sawyer who's usually working remotely. They don't, they don't sit here by the mill head. They're sitting in a cab or something like that. It helps them to see or, or visualize a hypothetical cut in the log from where they are. So if you just imagine drawing a straight line down the log like this, that way they can kind of rotate the log and use all this machinery that they have to manipulate these heavy logs and visualize the cut and then away they go. And obviously these are highly efficient modern technologies that allow sawmills to crank out a ton of wood with a very high level of precision. The problem is us little guys, well, we don't have all that technology. So what happens is we have to sort of use measurements like say off the bed rail here to kind of visualize where we want the kerf to start. And then we have to go down here and adjust the log and kind of come up with an idea about where the kerf might end based off measurements on the bed rail. And then we have to kind of make sure everything's right and then you make the cut and see if you're actually right or not. Obviously a sawyer with any amount of experience at all is gonna be pretty efficient at this process. On this smaller mill though, especially without all the hydraulic accessories that rotate the log, lift and level the log, 
especially when you get into wood that has a lot of taper, this process can be pretty laborious and time consuming. And it means that I spend a lot of time down here in the sawdust getting wet and it's a lot of work. I'm not trying to complain, I'm just saying that these are the realities of this process. And so hopefully this gadget will help save a tremendous amount of time and we can get a lot more sawmilling done, it'll be a lot more fun. So one of the first things you do typically with a sawmill is think about the taper that's in the log. So just imagine as a tree grows, it gets more narrow toward the top, right? But the problem is if you laid that log on a sawmill and you just take a cut, you're going to make a really weird cut. So what happens is the log ends up getting leveled both ends, if you will, draw an imaginary line through the heart of the log, and you want that log to be fairly level. That way you're kind of creating the most ideal, most efficient piece of wood that happens out of this particular tree. And of course, as trees start bending and twisting and getting all kinds of weird shapes, this becomes quite a fine art. So normally what I would do to start on a log, especially if it's a really high value log, just imagine this is a really long log and you're trying to cut this amazingly beautiful beam from it. It warrants quite a bit of setup. I think people have this imagination that sawmills are just like these super fast machines that are crazy. Watch out, they make logs like crazy. And the truth is when you get to making beams and high precision, it's amazing how much time is spent in the setup and then the cut happens very, very quickly. It's really no different than woodworking or anything else like that. So normally what I would do is I would take a level like this since I know that my sawmill is level and I would draw a line through the heart center on a level. So I would take a bubble level like this, draw a line here. And what that does is it gives me an idea how high the heart center is off of the bed rail. And since the bed rail is consistent, I can then go to the other end, draw a line through the heart and do the same thing. So if I measure here, based on my eyeball looking across that line, we're eight and five eighths to the heart center. So now if I come to the other end and do the same process, it gives me some idea. Now. This is kind of where the art of a sawyer comes in. You have to kind of imagine where the center of the log is, not just where the obvious heart center is, but maybe where you feel like the heart should be based on the shape of the log. So I'm actually gonna aim about right there and make my line. So our other side was eight and five eight. This side looks like it is about seven and five eighths. So there's actually an inch taper in this log that needs to be dealt with. So we would normally then jack the log up and have to measure and measure and measure and measure. Because the problem is every time we change this end, it's always possible the other end is changing. When you spend more money on a sawmill, you're gonna get hydraulic actuators and stuff, things that will lift that log for you. So the Sawyer at the other end can just push a button and guess what, the log levels. Well, on these more budgety type manual operating sawmills, you don't have those luxuries, so we use a good old car jack. So now we can jack the log up and try to get the heart centers to match. So we're starting at seven and five eighths. So we wanna go up about an inch. So let's go up a little bit, check, eight and three eighths, eight and a half, probably about eight and five eighths. And this log did not move much, it's only eight and a half on the other end. So that's pretty close. Depending on how valuable the log is, you might put a little bit more work into it. In this case, I'm pretty happy with that. Wonderful, so now we've solved the log taper issue and we have this kind of idyllic situation with our log. The problem is when I make the first cut, let's say that I know I wanna take a one inch board out of the top of this log. Where do I wanna start? on that end in order to take a one inch chunk out of this log. That's what the laser is gonna help us solve very, very quickly. So our laser is designed to mount to the blade cover on this side. And it should cast a line all the way down the entire log. It's meant to visualize the, I, the hypothetical plane of the blade. So we're gonna to have to do some tweaking and calibrating and adjusting, but the magnets, eh, pretty good. I think it'll probably survive some milling. It's a pretty brutal act. So then we'll have to adjust it somewhere down here, kind of once we get the sawmill fired up. We'll um, take a measurement off of the blade and then probably just see what the laser sees and kind of make a judgment call there. So let's take a moment and get this thing all buttoned up.
Wow, that was super easy. So just quick connection, double stick tape that down and plug everything in. I don't want to connect this permanently to anything because I can tell this is gonna need to be removed from the sawmill. And so this can just come up into the battery box and then at the end of the day, after we're done with sawmilling, we can just unplug it, leave all this stuff in the battery box so it's protected. So the only thing that can get to it are the yellow jackets and the masonry wasps. And then when we start up something, we'll just plug it back in. Wow, how cool is that? So we've got a nice laser beam going right there. Of course, I wanna be careful I don't get my eyes in it. So just trying to be careful with the camera, but you can get a good idea, there it is. And so what we need to do now is give it a little bit of an adjustment and see if we can get it to line up with the blade there. And then we'll kind of mess around with it on the log. We are currently at about 13 and a quarter on the blade we're at 13 and about fat three eighths so we just need to make a small adjustment to the laser here 13 and a quarter there so i think it went a little too much oh 13 and a quarter but i already see a problem we are you know probably a couple inches down on the blade here from top of that log and so you can see the laser there. Can you see it? Ooh, it's really faint it's right there. And that's not good. Oh, okay, all right. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna back off a little bit here. I'm starting to see it. I think it's right there. There it is. Okay, so it just kind of has an interesting hue. Not sure the camera can even pick up on it. But there is a green line there and it's, it's faint. So let's follow it down. I'm still seeing it right here. You can kind of see it on my hand. So here's the line. Let's see. Boy, I'm kind of losing it down here. I don't know. Okay, there it is. Yeah, I don't even see it on the log. Or do I? <laughs> I don't know, I can't tell you. According to this, it's about right there on my hand. But boy, I can't see it on the log. I really can't. The reason this is concerning is it's an overcast day. If you're not, if you're gonna see the laser, it's gonna be today. Because when the sun comes out, you can pretty much kiss it goodbye. Wait, hold on, look at that. That's super visible. So what am I doing wrong here? Do we need to move the laser closer? Is that what's going on? Let's try that. Let's see if we can move it a little closer. Well, it definitely is helping on the backside. So that made a pretty big difference. The problem is we don't know if the, we don't know if the laser's right now. So give me a minute, I'll adjust it. Okay, I moved the laser as close over here as I could to the log. And I would say that's an improvement. But you know what's really strange about this? You can't see the laser as good from the other side. Check it out. That's the same log, the same laser. Isn't that kind of bizarre? There's something maybe about the wood or the reflectivity. It's kind of bizarre. You would think it'd be the other way around. I see another challenge here and it just kind of dawned on me that this laser could end up kind of misrepresenting the log so or the blade. So we need to make sure that the the laser is fine-tuned and I'm not really sure how it's not self calibrating that I know of but man that's that looks like really close I wonder if we can change it oh yeah we can there we go so we can just get it to peak like right there where it's kind of clipping the edge of the of a level it's definitely not a piece of cake other than I guess you could just take a log cut right you could just make a cut and then do the same thing and that would be accurate but what if you don't want to do that what if you want to you know set your log up first before you uh, calibrate your laser so that should work fine as long as your blade is level so here we are this log isn't even a 10 foot log maybe eight feet it looks like we're really struggling when we get down here to the end of the log so i'm not sure i can almost i just it's really hard for me to say right now if i was in full sun maybe the sun will just pop out whether this is going to work or not Okay, I've done a bunch of diagnosing off camera and the kind of consensus is, yeah, it's not that good. So we're trying to kind of figure out if there's anything we can do. We've tried moving the laser closer to the blade itself, moving it out, thinking that maybe it would cast a better line to the log. And I'm just gonna say there's not really a great setup. When we move it really close, we get a great line on the inside of the log. Right now, we're as far out on the mill head as we can go and it's you can tell it's very hard to see the line on the log even in the front here where you would want to visualize the log it's definitely 
challenging to perceive. You can kind of get your eyes to adjust to it, but it's difficult. We did quite a bit of kind of testing and calibrating to get the uh, laser to be flat, true, and level across the whole sawmill. And I'll tell you, it's, it's quite a bit of work. It's something that I would not want to do every single day if I was going to come out here and just mill a few boards. And being that we want to not leave the laser connected for fear of weather issues, to think that you would have to set this thing up every single day uh, seems like a lot of work. So it's kind of strange, but clear over here, not near the sawmill, check that out. I got a pretty nice line on me. So I feel like there's maybe a small tweak that could make this thing work a little bit better, and that would be to make it aim the log a little bit, aim toward the log a little bit. Well, you're looking at it there. So it's not that it doesn't work, it's just that it's almost imperceptible in the wrong lighting conditions. And again, we are not in what I would consider the worst lighting conditions, especially since we're working outdoors. Maybe if your sawmill's indoors and you have better light control, maybe. You know, as I get around here, look at that. I feel like somehow, have I got this thing backwards? I don't even understand how that's possible. I feel like the laser is super visible from down here. That makes absolutely no sense. How can a laser be more visible at the end of the log than it is at the beginning. That's got me absolutely stumped. I think it's time to just make a test cut. Let's put this thing through its paces. So we wanna pretend like we don't know where the, the blade's gonna pop out over here. We have no idea. I haven't done any measuring or calculating or anything like that. I think it's time to just make a test cut. Let's put this thing through its paces. I'm gonna do a, a case study here real quick. Let's kind of roll up to the log and make a prediction. So, so there's the laser. Can you even see it? There it is, holy cow. What do you think, is it gonna happen? I don't know. So let's get rid of that. Take a moment, enjoy the beautiful wood. It's lovely. Wow. Okay, so I've done all the work to get the laser here lined up with the edge of that kerf. And assuming nothing changed with the calibration here, it should be here. Boy, it's very close, maybe within an eighth or so. It is on the log. Boy, you can barely see it. Hey, that's looking a lot better. Holy cow. That's very visible. And guess what? The sun is out too. So suddenly, somehow, all of a sudden, maybe it's the sawdust or something that's made this suddenly more visible. Like a lot more visible. Well, hold on. Let's check it from the other end. Well, I'd say it's pretty good over here too. The sun is shining and we got a pretty visible line down the log. Boy, that's kind of crazy that the outside of a log the laser doesn't shine and then here we've taken a kerf and voila we've got a nice line drawn on it so let's pretend i'm a sawyer and i'm trying to save time and i want to just take the log off right here at the end of that wane down here at the end of my sawmill right about there although once i get up here it gets really hard to distinguish the line again but i'm pretty close i mean i'm probably within a quarter there so i could go a couple more clicks Maybe like right there. Obviously I'm running back and forth for the video and I wouldn't want to be doing that if I was running a sawmill. But now, based on everything, this should be where my kerf is. Kind of cool thing is I can see that I'm gonna have a tiny bit of wane right here. And I'm actually, it looks like the log is actually up on a hump. See, there's a knot right here and it's actually making the log tilt this direction. So all of a sudden now my log needs to be jacked on the other end. Since this is a fairly small log, I can actually slide it down and get it off of that hump. And that's the information that this laser should be helping me figure out. So it looks like my best output is actually gonna be a little bit lower, like right around there, which puts me right at the edge of this wane down here. That actually worked pretty good, because now, according to this, I'm actually right about here on the log. So now I'm making very good decisions all of a sudden on how to make quick cuts. I feel like this video has taken so many twists and turns I can't even count. But now all of a sudden this line is showing up really good. And I feel like even on the other end, 
I could be using it to make really good decisions like this cut right here. So let's take a cut and see if we end up coming out right here. Well, I would say we did pretty good. I don't think that we nailed it, but we're very, very close. So there's the line and there's our kerf. I mean, pretty good. You can see how the line, maybe the laser's off just a little tiny bit on the kerf. Yeah, it's a little high down there, isn't it? And it's a little low down here. So looks like I haven't done the best, most perfect job of calibrating it, but Overall, I would say like you can even see the laser on the kerf there. So let's do a test here just out of curiosity. I'm going to blindly make a mark here and let's just go down to the mill head, adjust to the mark and make a cut and see what happens. So this, you would never do this, but let's hypothetically do this. Let's create a inch and a half cut here. We'll just aim for that. And I'm going to use a big fat crow's foot and see if we can hit it. And I'm not going to cheat. I'm not going to come down here and look at it. <laughs> shabby i mean we're not going to be making finish grade here but what is that probably within an eighth a fat eighth not bad from the mill head so i'm shooting a line now we're well, probably about eight feet away in the bright sunlight looking right into the sunlight and to be within an eighth is pretty good i mean that's going to save you a lot of time coming down here measuring and looking so where would you actually use this and how would it save us time so let's get rid of that one. Let's get rid of this one. Let's rotate this cant over and see how quickly we can make a decision on where to cut it. Oh, by the way, if your laser hits those, it's probably gonna cut it, right? So we'll drop those below there. Let's use the laser, come down onto the log. Okay, so we're on the log somewhere. Let's go right about there. We should take off every last bit of that wane on the log right there. Actually, based on what I see down here, I don't like it because I feel like I may be wasting a little bit of wood. So why don't we leave a little bit of weighing on the log on that end? A little bit like that, and what'll happen is we can still get a two-by lumber out of there. perfectly i'd say after all the fuss budgeting getting this thing set up it is starting to do exactly what it's supposed to do and that's help make faster decisions with a lot less running around in the mud so instead of having to come down here with my tape measure and pull a measurement off the bed here and then go down there and just double check and check all along here okay like what about there what about over there what about where there's like a little extra belly in the log what about that oh okay right here all right right there looks good let's hit it and voila we've got a very nice cut so i could very quickly rotate this again and take the same cut and i'm working extremely efficient now which is crazy because a few minutes ago i thought this was a lost cause Wow, I feel like I don't know what happened. I don't know what changed. I can't for the life of me understand what changed from the first log that we were working on. Has the lighting really changed that much out here? I'm not really sure, but I can't figure out why this is suddenly so visible where before it was just throw it away. I mean, it's just pure junk and look how good it looks now.
pretty darn decent and quick. I mean, that's the whole intention is to be making decisions from down there over here and really all along the material, but to be making them quickly and accurately. I would say there's definitely some questions that need to be answered about this gadget that uh, maybe there's an answer for already. But I think like anything, it's highly unlikely you're going to buy a gadget off the internet, shove it on your sawmill, and you're going to now become the chief sawyer of sawyers among the planet. I've noticed during sawmilling, see how that thing's rotated? Yeah, something's not right. It seems like there's enough vibration here that this thing is wiggling and becoming very unreliable. I'm sure if we took a tape measure and put it on the level or the laser, I'm thinking that it's now out of whack. And well, that's not gonna work, right? We can't be tweaking this thing after every single cut because how have we saved anything at all? Something I wonder is if we were to turn the laser, if it would be more effective. See how when I get further around the corner from the laser, the beam quality starts to diminish? But out here in front of the laser, the beam is super strong. Yeah, that. So I actually think that if there was some way to turn this toward the log, that would actually provide a superior um, imprint. The other thing is it, it seems like from playing with this that moving it closer to the log while you get a better beam quality initially, it's worse at the end of the log. The other problem is we, we kind of looked at this for quite a while and we could not find anywhere else where you could conceivably mount this that didn't interfere with this blade guard opening. It didn't interfere with the track moving. It didn't interfere with the blade. And so really this is just about it for this particular sawmill. It sort of seemed like if you could manufacture something on the carriage itself here and maybe come out and up, maybe there's a chance if you don't interfere with this door swinging open to change the blade. Well, look at that. I've just somehow I've just bumped this imperceptibly. I don't even remember bumping it, but that's just how easily it moves. Oh, you know what? I see exactly what was causing that. I think because of where we had this positioned, it was ever so slightly off of the metal here, causing it to migrate. It's, it's definitely something that's gonna take some time. And I know the guys that saw for a living, you guys out there that do this and you've been doing this for a long time, you have tried and true systems. This is something that most of you would probably scoff at, laugh at, um, and certainly not jump on the bandwagon early because time is money and sawmilling is hard work and nobody has time to play with trinkets. The fun thing is I'm not really under the gun here. I am just kind of sort of goofing off and having a good time, but maybe I'm helping somebody out there who is thinking about one of these types of trinkets and trying to decide whether it makes sense for them. I think that if you were gonna do this seriously, there's definitely a use case here for physically attaching it to your sawmill. And I'm assuming that, that you wouldn't compromise any adjustability, but clearly there are screw holes here that could be used to physically attach this to the mill. And that may get rid of any and all of this fuss budgeting uh, that just comes with being magnetic. The problem to me at that point is you're gonna have to come up with some way to cover the device because you're gonna have to leave it out in the weather. And while I'm assuming it's not exactly a, a weenie device, it's designed to be used around a sawmill, I'm not sure how much weather, you know, this type of thing can take. And so being able to remove it and take it indoors when you're not sawmilling, like a lot of us who don't saw every single day, this thing could be sitting out in the sun for months. I guess now that I think about it, there's actually a really quick way to calibrate this. If you have a log up with a kerf, you can just very quickly move this and then adjust it back to be calibrated. Uh, if you don't have stickers and things all over your sawmill. So that's something to think about is that you can actually very quickly put this back if, if it's already set up. Of course, I see now too that if you, if you wanted to and you were just wanting to get out here, get up and running, you could maybe just have a sacrificial piece of wood, throw it on the sawmill, make a cut, calibrate this, and now in, essentially, in theory, it should mimic your sawmill perfectly and you should be up and running. So. I guess there's probably a learning curve to this, just like with sawmilling and everything else, getting your system dialed to where when you get out here, you're just going to work. 
I think is what a lot of us don't like about a lot of this stuff is inconsistency, unreliability, wasted time, and certainly wasted energy because this stuff's already hard work as it is. For the record, I took about 30 seconds and just did a quick alignment on the kerf there and maybe 10 seconds and aligned the um, laser down at the other end. So bumping this certainly does not kind of ruin your day. It seems like getting the initial setup done really is the time consuming part, but once you get a routine with it, even if you were to bump it, it's not the end of the world. Moving the gadget up here, I'm guessing is gonna have more consistent results. You know, getting rid of some of that duct tape might help too, and really give it a secure surface. As is true, I think with every sawmilling project, we learn something about sawmilling every single time. You know, it's funny, you would think, oh, you've sawmilled the timber frame, you put 55 logs, way more than that through the sawmill. You must know a lot about sawmilling, and I do. I've learned a lot about things that work, don't work, where to, where to not waste time, that are things that greenhorns like myself at one time just we, we think are important, and at some point you just laugh. Like, don't waste your time with all that stuff. You're just burning up your blades, you're burning up gas, and you're burning up time. But at the same time, for everything I've milled, there's always something I haven't milled. And so as sawyers, I don't care how long you've been sawing, you're still learning. And some of it's regional, some of it's just kind of what you've had a chance to sawmill. Um, for example, we don't have much hardwood around here. So a lot of the guys across the country that are out there doing hardwood, I got nothing. I have no idea. But a lot of those guys may not be sawing big timber frames with 28 foot long timbers that require an ex exceptional amount of dedication to get within a 16th over 28 feet. So it, it really comes down to what kind of sawing you're doing and you're always gonna be learning no matter what. I'm sure the person that makes this laser is cringing if they're watching this video because they're like, that knucklehead is making an idiot out of my device. And I think that what's fun about these videos is that I'm a real person and I really bought this and I really read the instructions and I really put it on my sawmill and I have no help. I've had nobody give me tips or tricks, nobody guide me through this process. So it's fairly realistic about what you could experience if you're gonna buy something like this. And I know a lot of the people in the Facebook group where I saw this device had a lot of questions and maybe this device, or this, and maybe this video will answer a lot of those questions if they end up seeing it. We have a huge sawmill project coming up because we're gonna be working on some timber stairs. And so I thought this would be kind of fun to install before that project because we'll get a chance to run the saw and do some testing and kind of come up with our own rhythm and our own system to either make this gadget part of our day-to-day -day sawing process or kind of come to the conclusion, you know what, it's kind of ridiculous, doesn't really save us any time. So I can see myself in the future making that heart center mark that we made earlier and then just making a little mark on the outside of the wood and all I have to do is set my blade on that end to the heart center and jack to the laser line. I can see now how this is gonna start saving me time. And then the decisions we've been making here, uh, and really this is not a great example because some logs with, with branches and things have a lot of character in the edge of the log. And when you're really trying to be that precise sawyer and get that last little bit, like if you're, and I can tell you as someone who sawed a lot of logs to the nth, that's something that sometimes is extremely important where you are literally looking for an eighth or a sixteenth in a log and how to not have too much wane and all these things. And this laser just helps you to visualize the blade travel all the way down. And so you can really make those decisions quickly. So I, I'm not really sure. I'm going to have to kind of play with this. I think it's going to be something we're going to play with on the next few saw milling projects and really see how it fits in. But I can already see how I don't have to spend as much time running back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, measure that, measure this, measure that. I can just quickly look up and tell whether the, the log is cantilevered or whether I'm leveling what I want to be doing or not. <laughs>